In 2001, the IPCC pronounced weightily on climate change, as it does every six years, and projected an average temperature rise of between 1 and 6 degrees centigrade by the end of this century. The new IPCC report, released in February 2007, kept the same essential scale, although they now think that as little as 1 degree is very unlikely, whilst the worst case scenario is up to 6.4 Celsius. 6,000 years ago it was just under a degree warmer than it is now in today's North America. Huge areas of desert covered the Great Plains from southern Texas right up to Canada. A warming climate is likely to lead to devastating drought in the US Midwest, far worse than the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Because global warming is amplified at the poles, one degree will see the continuing disappearance of the Arctic ice cap. 2007 could record the lowest ice cover extent ever, effectively pushing species such as polar bears, walruses and ringed seals right off the top of the planet. One model study shows that, with one degree of warming, 63 out of 65 animal species lose a third of their core habitat. The same goes for the Cape Floristic area in South Africa, as well as many amphibian species in Central America. The world's coral reefs are expected to see so much bleaching in the warmer seas that they will be practically destroyed. At two degrees we will see another impact on the marine environment which has nothing to do with global warming. The oceans become acidic, which in turn dissolve creatures like krill, the very basis of the marine food chain. If these disappear, it will affect creatures that prey on them, such as fish, sharks, whales, dolphins, and eventually humans. Every summer will be as hot as 2003, when 30,000 people died from heat stroke across Europe, including 600 Londoners. And if that becomes normal, the extremes would see Middle Eastern temperatures in Europe, putting the death tolls perhaps in the hundreds of thousands. The entire Greenland ice cap will be eventually eliminated. Ice will also be melting in the world's mountain ranges, the disappearance of most of the Andean glaciers will remove much of the fresh water which keeps the rivers flowing to the populated desert coast. A similar problem is likely to evolve in California, where a reduction in snowpack in the Sierra Nevada will see major cities going thirsty. This is already happening now. According to modelling studies, up to a third of species alive today would eventually become extinct. This would be the worst mass extinction to hit the planet since the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago. Now at this point I need to stop and assess where we currently are. According to the best scientific information we are already committed to one degree of warming because of historical emissions, so there's nothing we can do to avoid it. In emissions terms we will be over the two degrees level within the next 10 or 20 years which explains why the situation is so urgent. But this does mean to look on the bright side that all of the rest of the impacts I'm going to show you still need not happen. If we can change our energy and emissions in time we can still avoid ever reaching a world three or more degrees hotter than today. In the three degree world, we're likely to cross one of the most important thresholds of all, the point at which the Amazon rainforest no longer receives enough rainfall and basically begins to burn down, pouring huge amounts of carbon back into the atmosphere. Forests and soils worldwide are expected to add another 1.5 degrees centigrade, taking us straight into the 4 degree world. The Kalahari Desert spreads across Botswana and much of southern Africa. Australia loses so much rainfall that agriculture and most urban centres become non-viable. Hurricanes strengthened to Category 6, Hurricane Katrina was Category 4, and pummel tropical coastlines. On the other side of 4 degrees lie still more tipping points, principally the likely release of millions of tonnes of methane from the Siberian permafrost. Once this thaws, it will boost global temperatures still further, taking us right on up to the next level. The Arctic ice cap will already have gone completely, so this is where the Antarctic becomes significantly involved, with a potential collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, again accelerating sea levels. In terms of mountain glaciers, this is what the Alps could look like, much as the High Atlas in Morocco looks today. We'll be seeing new deserts establishing in southern Europe. That includes Spain, Italy and Greece as the Sahara essentially moves onto the northern side of the Mediterranean. Even in the home counties of England, temperatures could hit 45 degrees centigrade in the summer. The last time the world was 5 degrees hotter than now was 55 million years ago at the start of the Eocene period, when there was a major global warming event, probably volcanic in origin. 
Even so, it took 10,000 years for temperatures to climb this high. We are looking at achieving the same rise in less than a century. This was a time when subtropical species like crocodiles and hippos lived in the high Arctic, in places which are, at the time of recording, covered by ice. Part of the reason could be the worst tipping point of all. There is more methane hydrate trapped in the ocean's beds than all of the world's coal, oil and gas put together. Methane hydrates may well have caused the six degree rise at the end of the Permian period, 251 million years ago, which set the scene for the world's worst ever mass extinction, when 90% of life was wiped out. That's the nearest our Earth has ever come to becoming just another lifeless rock. And it's certainly a sobering thought that our children could be living through a similar catastrophe unless we act to reduce greenhouse gas emissions today.